Well, speaking of corruption, it's become so much a fact of life in some countries that many citizens, it seems, just accept it as one of the routine costs of daily life. Take Lebanon, for example. Venetia Rainey has been to the capital, Beirut, to look at new creative measures there to raise public awareness about the corruption problem. So if I say the word corruption, what's the first word that comes to mind? Government, I'd say. Politics. Uh, public administration. Government? The people. <laughs> the country. The old country. Corruption in Lebanon is not just a problem, it's a big problem, and its residents know it. Transparency International's annual Corruption Perceptions Index, which relies on local expert assessments and opinion surveys, ranks Lebanon 136 out of 175 countries. But while awareness is clearly not an issue, apathy is. From bribes to get everyday paperwork done faster to buying senior jobs in ministries, corruption is so pervasive in Lebanon that most simply accept it as part of life. To fight this, anti-corruption NGOs have had to pull out all the stops and get creative. Chief among them is Sekar al Dakene, Arabic for close the corner shop. Operations manager Jihad Namor explains more. So we did this uh, short film where you see uh, a person going into uh, what looks like a corner shop. It's kind of concentrated of all the public administrations where everything is bought and sold. And you see that person trying to get his papers done and what he has to go through. Different forms of corruption that one sees daily in, uh, in our public services, but all concentrated in one place, one shop, in a, a kind of small corner shop. Sakhar al Dakene then decided to take it one step further. They installed the fictional corner shop for three days in a real shop space on a main road in East Beirut, inviting passers-by to come in and peruse the products on their shelves. Fake ID cards, education diplomas, driving licenses, administrative positions, the whole shebang. It was quite fun and also it was quite revealing about the situation. A lot of people took this very seriously. So we had people who came in and told us this was scandalous, but that was a very small minority. Most people were quite surprised and some of them were rather happy that uh, things had become so easy that they don't have to go around getting their papers all over the country. They, all they had to do was come into one little corner shop and everything could be bought in there. The creativity and energy of Sekar al initiatives have captured the public's imagination in a totally new way. Their website and hotline has received nearly 2,000 reports in the eight months since starting, detailing more than $1 million in bribes. But even this is just a drop in the ocean compared to the big picture cost of corruption to the Lebanese economy, according to Jad Shaban, an economics professor at the American University of Beirut. This is a very sensitive topic and the, the whole system in Lebanon is built around institutions that are opaque. So we don't have exact numbers, we have estimates. Now the estimates range from about 20% of GDP to as high as 40% of GDP. The black market itself is, was estimated by the World Bank at about 45% of GDP, uh, but this figure varies. In 2013, Lebanon's GDP was $45 billion, so even at a conservative estimate, Corruption is eating up around $9 billion a year. One woman thinks she has the answer. Elect her as president. My name is Nadine Moussa. I'm a Lebanese citizen at first. I'm a candidate for the presidency and I'm also a lawyer and a civil society and political activist. Moussa is the country's first ever female presidential candidate and the founder of the National Association to Combat Corruption. Compared to the largely male group of people that currently dominate Lebanese politics, people that Musa refers to as dinosaurs, she is a fresh face. No role fighting in the civil war, no connections to foreign countries, no affiliation with the traditional parties, and no vested interest in the current broken system. From her family home in a leafy corner of Beirut's Ashrafia neighborhood, she explains what needs to change to reorient Lebanon towards transparency. We had, as an association, a study on how to combat corruption and the two main keys to open the door 
to a real uh, a whole process of fighting passes through independent judiciary and a new electoral law, new elections, because you really need a legitimate parliament that really represents all the Lebanese society in order to enact the laws that will uh, take us to a transparent and good governance system. But first, she needs to get elected. Over the past year, there have been 23 attempts to fill the empty presidential post, all of which have failed due to inter-party rivalries and regional tensions. So for now, Musa's presidency bid remains a pipe dream. Venetia Rainey reporting there from Lebanon.